Now that Monster Hunter World is completed, if you head over to the events tab, you'll see a bunch of quests that are listed which you can do at any given time. These are limited time missions that give you access to super powerful gear, really fun collabs, and generally quests that are really useful for farming otherwise tricky to get components. Since Monster Hunter World is no longer in development and has finished, Capcom did us the solid of making all of these previously limited time events always available. Now of course to a new or even a returning player that is going to be mega overwhelming. In an effort to help reduce some of that overwhelm and demystify the missions that are available, I've been putting together roundups of what I think are some of the best events that you can do at different parts of the game. The one we're going to look at today is an MR24 quest that means you can only do it once you've completed Iceborne. If you're not quite there, or even if you are, you absolutely want to check out the previous roundups I did. In both of the mid to late event roundup videos I did, I chocked them full of fantastic quests allowing you to get really strong armor sets, fantastic weapons, and of course, different ways for you to farm decorations and armor spheres. I'm Lighted Up Dan, and on this channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs to name a few. And with that said, let's get to it. This next event is the one event to rule them all. It's a 6 star MR24 quest, meaning you have to have beaten Iceborne and lifted the cap. You'll be facing off against an either large crown or small crown Zenoga inside of the arena. Zenoga is a really hard monster to tackle, demanding good knowledge of its moveset, otherwise it'll just pummel you into oblivion. Coming into the fight with 20 or more thunder resistance is going to do you a solid to prevent you from getting the blight. I also like to make sure I've got three stun resistance so I'm not caught in any horrible attack loops. I find bringing lances really cozy and any other shielded weapon would probably be really helpful too. As with all Iceborne monsters, the fights are designed for you to utilize your clutch claw, so make sure you're wounding the parts and spotting opportunities when Zenoga isn't enraged to send it into the wall. You've probably noticed that a lot more shinies are dropping than usual. This is due to the event and you're going to need to pick these up. I would absolutely encourage you to do this in multiplayer, one because multiplayer is super Super fun and two because lots of people are always doing this quest. After you've made peace with your life mistakes and finished getting slammed into next Tuesday, you will notice that you've accumulated a lot of various dragon vein coal materials. Now this is where it gets absolutely wild. After a certain point, I think it might be after you've beaten Iceborne, you can switch your steamworks over to use a hundred fuel a go. That's just as well because you're going to have anywhere between six to over nine thousand. Yeah, that's right. I said it. I made the reference. You might still be thinking, well, so what? Okay, yeah, Steamworks is kind of useful. I do it every now and then. But do you realize exactly what you get from Steamworks? As well as the Dust of Life's and the Ancient Potions, you're also going to get a ton of heavy and even king armor spheres. I got 40 hard, 40 heavy, and 10 king off just one go. We ain't done. That's not all. I bet you noticed you got a lot of tickets, some of which you may kind of ignore. You won't be for long. You know what a pain in the ass making mega armor skin and demon drug is? Because you have to go out of your way to specifically farm for nourishing extract. Not anymore you don't. You know all those steam tickets you're not using because you've already got the clockwork gear or you're not really interested? Well, those go one for one for a mega demon drug or armor skin. I know. Trust me. And we're still not done there. All those steel alchemy and silver alchemy tickets, all used for melding decorations directly. So you're stocking up on dusts of life, ancient potions, all sorts of armor spheres, you never have to farm for nourishing extracts again, and you're getting more common and rare decorations than you even know what to do with. And all of that is just from one event. Occasionally an event is so good, so worthwhile to do that I make sure I cover it individually. And I can't think of a better example than a farewell to Zenoga. That's all I've got for you for today, friends. I hope that's helped demystify the events a little bit and given you something to aim towards. As previously mentioned, if you're not quite at MR24, check the previous roundup videos. They will be a tremendous help to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can subscribe to the channel for more action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs. And if you want to swing by the open lobbies during the live streams, head on over to my Twitch. I would love to have you there. I'll put the links for that and the other videos in the description for you. But until next time, I'll see you in the new world.